Hi students, this is the physics experiment number 2 about lenses and mirrors. I'll start with the explanation of optical devices symbols we use in this experiment. We will use all these symbols to portray the optical light paths in the experiment. The first one is the convex lens. This name is based on its convex shape. However, many people prefer calling it based on its functionality of converging light as the converging lens. The second one is the concave lens or diverging lens. In this experiment, we will call the focal length of the convex lens as f1 and the focal length of the concave lens as f2. The third symbol here is the plane mirror which we will use only in part 2 of the experiment. And the last one is the concave mirror which can be used to focus the light. Its light converging characteristic can be described by its radius of curvature r. This experiment consists of four parts. Start with part number one. The objective of this part is to determine the focal length f1 from the parallel rays which are the light rays from a distant object. In theory, when the parallel rays are incident upon the convex lens the image will present at the focal point of the lens. We will do this experiment by setting up a screen behind the lens. Then keep adjusting the position of the screen until we get the clearest image of the distant object, probably a building or a tree outside. Then read positions of lens and screens. The distance between the lens and the screen gives us the focal length f1. Students are encouraged to repeat this experiment several times in order to get the average value of f1. The position of the lens in each time should be different from the previous value by the distance of 5 to 10 centimeters. Then readjusting the position of the screen to get the best image. Therefore, this is how to determine the focal length by using the parallel rays. Part number 2 is still about finding f1 but use the non-parallax image method. What is the non-parallax image? It is the kind of image when it is exactly at the same position as the object. You will see both stick together all times, no matter with which angles of view you look at them from. The instruments we use in this part consists of the convex lens, the plane mirror placing behind the lens, and the sharp point object placing in front of the lens. If we move the object to the focal point of the lens, then the light from object after passing through the lens will become parallel light. After perpendicularly reflecting from the plane mirror, the light will form the image at the same position as the object. Students will see the non-parallax image and find the focal length from the difference between the position of the lens and the sharp point object. Students, again, should try to repeat this experiment two more times to get more accurate value of f1 by changing the position of lens and plane mirror. Then move the object until see the non-parallax image again. Part 3 of the experiment, students are asked to find out f total which is the total focal length of the combined lenses. The combined lenses is the convex lens with the focal length of f1 attached with the concave lens with the focal length of f2. We have known the focal length f1 already from part 1 and part 2 whereas f2 is what will be determined in this part. The object which is placed in front of the lenses is the light bulb. The screen behind the lenses will receive the image of the tungsten filament inside the light bulb. The theory behind this experiment is the relationship between the object distance and the image distance which described by the thin lens equation 1 over u plus 1 over v equal to 1 over f total. u is the object distance which is the distance between the object and the combined lenses whereas v is the image distance which is the distance between the image or the screen and the lenses. The term 1 over f total in the equation is equal to 1 over f1 plus 1 over f2. Students are asked to try five different positions of the object, the light bulb. Each position should be around 3 to 5 centimeters different from the previous value. For each position of the object, the screen will be moved to achieve the clearest image and then the new value of object distance and image distance, u and v, are recorded. After students have done this, the data of 1 over u and 1 over v are plotted on a graph which is the x-axis for 1 over u and the y-axis for 1 over v. 
If we look at the thin lens equation and compare it with the general form of linear equation y equal to mx plus circa 1 over u is x1 over v is y, therefore the theoretical value of the slope should be minus 1. In addition, the x-intercept and y-intercept are equal to 1 over f-total. When f-total is determined from the graph of 1 over u versus 1 over v, the focal length of the concave lens can be found because we have the value of f1 already from part 1 and part 2. On the graph, students should write down details of date to analysis. Firstly, the slope of the trend line from the data of the experiment. Check whether the slope value is close to the theoretical value or not. Secondly, determine the y-intercept and x-intercept of the graph. We can use the average of both to find out the total focal length of the combined lenses. Finally, f2 can be determined from the reverse value of 1 over f total subtract by 1 over f1. The f1 value should be the average value of f1 from part 1 and part 2. Next, let's go to the last part, part 4. The objective of this part is to determine the radius of curvature of the concave mirror. Students will use the non-parallax image method that has been used in part 2. The sharp point object is placed in front of the mirror. The inverted image is observed when you look at the front of the mirror. When the object is moved to the position far from the mirror by the distance equal to the radius of curvature of the mirror, light from the object will be incident perpendicularly on the surface of the mirror. Therefore, the reflected light will be formed the image at the same position as the object. The non-parallax image will be observable. Students should change angles of view or move the object until see the non-parallax image sticking together with the object, not moving with the angles of view. The focal length of the concave mirror can be found from half the value of the radius of curvature. And that's all for the experiment number two about lenses and mirrors. This is the instrument setup of part 1 which is about the determination of convex lens focal length, f1, by parallel rays. Students will use this lens to get the light from a distant object, for example, a building outside. Behind the lens is the screen which receives the image of the outside building. Students will record the position of the lens from the scale ruler. For example, this lens is set at the position of 30 centimeters. Then students move the screen until the clearest image presence on the screen. Read the positions of the screen. For this setup, the position of the screen is 40 cm. The focal length f1 is the difference between the position of the lens and the screen. In this case, it's 10 cm. And that is the end of part 1. This is the instrument setup of part 2 which is about the determination of convex lens focal length f1 by the non-parallax image. This plane mirror placed behind the lens reflects the light back and the image is formed in front of the lens. The object is the sharp point thing here. Students will record the positions of the convex lens and the plane mirror behind the lens. Then students will observe the inverted image above the object. The height of lens should be adjusted until the sharp point of the image just touches the sharp point of the object when looking straight. Then change the angles of view from left to right. Students probably see that the image seems to jump from one side to the other side of the object. That is the parallax effect because the image is not yet at the same position as the object. Hence, students should move the object until the non-parallax image is seen. Then record the position of the object. The focal length f1 is determined from the difference of the object and the lens. I'll show how the non-parallax image looks like. What you see here is the position of the object which provides the non-parallax image. Students can see clearly here that the inverted image sticks together with the sharp point. When the angles of view change from left to right, both object and image seem to move together. If students get the image like this, record the position of the object and find out f1 from the distance between the lens and the object. Here is the instrument setup of part 3. The combined lenses here consist of the convex lens, whose focal length f1 has been determined already in part 1 and part 2, 
and the concave lens with the focal length f2 which will be determined in this part of the experiment. The object in front of the combined lenses is the light bulb and behind the combined lenses is the screen on which the image of the tungsten filament is present. The combined lenses should be placed at the middle of the rail. The position is 50 centimeters. Students choose one position of the object. The distance between the object and the combine lenses is the object distance, U. Students will adjust the screen until achieving the clearest image. Then read the position of the screen. The distance between the combined lenses and the screen is the image distance, V. Now one data point of the graph of 1 over U versus 1 over V is acquired. Next. We change the position of the object, as a result, the new value of U is acquired. The new value should be 3 to 5 centimeters different from the previous value. The screen is then moved until the clearest image is achieved again. The new position of the screen is recorded and then the value of V is acquired. Students will repeat this experiment in order to get 5 different data points for the graph of over U versus 1 over V. Then determine the slope x intercept and y intercept as i have explained previously here is the instrument setup of part 4 this is the concave mirror whose radius of curvature will be determined in this experiment by the non parallax image the method is the same as part 2 the object is the sharp point pin we have used previously students will record the position of the concave mirror then look at the inverted image in front of the mirror Change the angles of view and check whether the object and image seem to move together or not. If not, keep moving the object until the non-parallax image is acquired. Record the position of the object. The radius of curvature, R, is the distance between the concave mirror and the object. In this setup, we get R is around 30 centimeters and therefore the focal length is around 15 centimeters.